every time I was like, okay, take a breath, something new would happen, and it was <gasps> It's Middle Earth, there's never peace, right? If, like, Sauron is hot, I feel like people would be like, I can fix him. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, not to be confused with the successful porn franchise, Lord of the Rings. Though at this point, Amazon's adaptation is doing to the fan base what Ramington Steel was doing to the Elf Queen. I'm not the biggest Lord of the Ring fan. In fact, everything I know about Lord of the Rings stems from the movies and Led Zeppelin songs. Hey, stop! Oh, and I can Google search. But after seeing the trailer, I think I'm more than qualified than the people writing it. On June 20th, Amazon announced the new Lord of the Rings show in the worst way possible by having modern day Lax Luthor, AKA Jeff Bezos, posing coquettishly over the official poster that looked like a stained piece of wood. Lord of the Rings fans soon stained their pants. With that come hither stare that only Jeff could give, he said, I'm going to f your childhood. That's important. Isn't it? <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> because nothing is more promising than a soulless corporation acquiring the rights to a fan beloved franchise and adapting it to modern times and modern audiences. Look at what happened with Star Wars. So, oh, mm, it's not really a good example. He Man. No. Mm -mm. Hey, the Marvel movies. My God, they're terrible. Lord of the Rings fans commented on the tweet from Daddy Jeffy B. Quickly pointing out that Amazon's adaptation of the Wheel of Time series suffered from being completely disrespectful to the original lore and shoving woke agenda politics into the story. They held little to no hope for the Rings of Power. And they were right. This age will be remembered for being completely and utterly creatively bankrupt. Frankly, anyone holding out hope that the Lord of the Rings show wouldn't have been a hot mess is probably the type of person that's still holding out hope that Jesus will come to them when they die and invite them into the gates of heaven for cookies and cream. When in reality, you're just worm food. But let's be real here. Jordan and Tolkien needed to be taken down a peg. Both men were beating up a poor Asian author at Barnes and Nobles by selling more books than her in death. She wasn't afforded any shelf space and she was still living. Damn dead white men using male privileged out selling an Asian woman from beyond the grave. America's the absolute worst. Yeah! That's what f***ing my wife! For making me look like a dog's nut back there! In the series Wheels of Time, the word bosom was used so often that it offended a female journalist. He spoke of women's breasts so much in book five that she found it abysmal, I believe. I could be quoting her wrong. I can't go on with the video. Where's my woke <laughs> stew? Well, Vanity Fair put out an article that put no fans' fears to rest, but it did tickle the belly of people looking for, um, what's those buzzwords again, Stu? Diversity and representation. Thank you. It tickled the bellies of people who were looking for diversity and representation. Also, there was an interesting quote that I thought was funny. Can we come up with a novel Token never wrote and do it as the mega event series that could only happen now. Yes, because Tolkien's son finally retired, so you could get your filthy little mitts on, let it go. Any rational person would say, no, you can't. If you could come up with something on the level of Tolkien's work, you wouldn't need Tolkien's work to bounce your new scary great ideas off of. This is a $1 billion fan fiction. Basically, Amazon's gonna do what every mega corporation does to an IP. They buy up an intellectual property with a built-in fan base. They twist it into what they want it to be so they can have Twitter brainlets who need representation in every part of their lives because these people are unable to connect with anything outside of themselves. It's the ultimate me generation. The hubris is nothing short of staggering. The journalists and activists who fought for nothing in their lives except for trying to get Twitter likes and being able to buy the first Apple iPhone product when it launches. We'll all cheer and sing. Then when the real fans call out your lazy writing and your tokenism, you will scream bigots. And then we will all be washed away in the flood of mediocrity. All right, remember the elf queen from the Lord of Rings movies, Galadriel? She goes all bipolar on Frodo when he tempts her with the ring and he's all like, take the ring. And then she's 
thinks about what she could do with the ring, and then she just sort of has this flip out movement. Well, anyway, they turn her into a warrior because strong women. Nerdrotic coined the phrase Gladriel, War Gladriel, I believe, or something like that. And ironically, it came to fruition. I wonder what that feels like. But then again, things are so just predictable. Anyone with common sense can predict what the hell's happening next. It's becoming sad, really. Is this what it means to get older? You literally see stupid <laughs> coming a mile away while young people are like, this is great. It's going to be good. And I'm like, nah, they're going <laughs> to your hair, kid. You might want to pull out an umbrella. A character that even a filthy casual like me knows, Galadriel isn't a warrior, but she is shoehorned into becoming one because every strong female character that's written in this modern day and age is exactly the same to the point of where it's no longer parody, it's just a sheer lack of creativity. On such a level, you honestly can't fathom it. And then you begin to wonder how do people like this keep getting jobs? But you realize the people writing this also worked on, what was that Star Trek show that sucked? God, there is actually a couple sh Star Trek shows. It's hard to pinpoint which one was it. We also got a black elf now with short hair. As we all know, elves are often Anglo-Saxon in design, and the Sylvan elves are described as having dark hair with whiter olive skin. Okay, first of all, why doesn't this elf have long hair? Just rocking like a short do. And it's all curly, so you know he uses a do-rag. But, you know, diversity and representation. Oh, and by the way, he's in an interspecies relationship with a white woman. Ooh, I guess this is their big move to make the show more inclusive, more diverse, and relatable to our times. Then there's the black female dwarf queen that even my mother sat there and said, because she's a real big Lord of the Rings man. Like, I don't even bother talking to her about it, because, you know, if it ain't Gundam, I don't care. My mother goes, why is she black? They live in caves. And then I had to report my mother for being a bigot. Also, they skipped out of the part that the female dwarf has a beard. Well, all female dwarves have beards. It was described even in the movies, but to hell with it. It's true you don't see many dwarf women. And in fact, they are so alike in voice and appearance <laughs> that they're often mistaken for dwarf men. It's the beards. And this in turn has given rise to the belief that there are no dwarf women. Of course, this became a bone of contingent with most of the people who actually cared about Lord of the Rings and read the books. And they are going up against Twitter brainlets. And Twitter brainlets basically see everything as racist. So if you don't sit there and go, oh my god, it's so progressive. Biggie Smalls is in the Lord of the Rings. If you don't sit there and cheer for it, you're the biggest big... What's that, Stu? That joke was could get us in trouble. Well, then edit it out, you idiot. Of course, we had this great tweet from Outstar. Good work, Outstar. You really showed those bigots. Knowing this scene exists and imagining the fan outcry that would have happened if it was released today is a nice wake-up call on how the online discourse changed in 20 years. And then she completely and utterly got demolished on Twitter because it was in the books, you little brainlet. Nobody was bothered by it because it was accurate. That's the problem. If you stick to the lore, no one would have a problem. People would have cheered from the heavens. Oh my god, Amazon did something right. Maybe Jeff Bezos isn't Lex Luthor. That's all they had to do, but they didn't. All you gotta do is give the fans what they want and they will cheer for you like you are a god. Well, the Lord of the Rings trailer came out and it went over about as well as DSB's fan base as he sat there with a new emergency and told the fans that they needed to buy in. Any voice of dissent was written off as a bigoted response to the Lord of the Rings show. 124 K dislikes to 100 K likes and climbing. I have a feeling that it won't end well for Daddy Jeff, but I doubt he'll care. He'll be on that gigantic supersized yacht that's the biggest one in the world. People began to start quoting Tolkien in the comment section. Evil can't create, only destroy. Amazon for a hot minute actually moderated that quote. So people started putting the quote in different languages. It was a hot mess for Amazon that day. The fallout was nothing short of radioactive. It killed all the hype it touched. Amazon also had a big brain move to have some show with something called the super fans reacting to the Lord of the Rings trailer. I guess you need to pay people to act like they're hyped for this because the fan base wasn't having any of it. To briefly summarize, it's 12 minutes of um, basically people talking about diversity and representation and being able to identify with someone in the show because they're the same skin color. 
that was it. And I sat there and I was like, it's, wow, this is just, it's kind of shit. Amazon pulled it like in two days. Let's run some clips, Stu. Every time I was like, okay, take a breath, something new would happen and it was <gasps> It's Middle Earth, there's never peace, right? If like Sauron is hot, I feel like people would be like, I can fix him. <laughs> Middle Earth had like a club. <laughs> Yo, this tune is banging. Starstruck, mystified and starstruck. Oh my God. I hate this. It's already crap. I can't go through this. What I have to go through this. I hate all of this. Why do companies have to suck? Power. Just dropped with a teaser trailer and I'm here with the Fellowship of Influencers. Chanel, Joel and Kelsey. How you guys doing? The Fellowship of Influencers. I never heard of these people, but then again, I'm not English. Very excited after watching that. Yes. Come on. Yes. Very intrigued to just see everyone else's thoughts and just mm. gather what we all think. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. All right, three words to describe the Rings of Power teaser trailer. Go. Okay, breathtaking. I literally didn't breathe. Uh, exhilarating and intriguing. I did notice that you weren't breathing. Yeah, I, I was, was gonna cool. call <laughs> first aid. It was like I was trying, I was but every time I was like, okay, take a breath, something new would happen, and it was. <gasps> the trailer wasn't that interesting. You sit there, you look at the trailer, and you're kind of like. Okay, here we go. Mega Corporation buys another intellectual property and then puts out another show. Oh, they got some stuff wrong. What a surprise. Oh, people who don't like it are bigots. The typical things. You can't have an opinion now. If you do anything other than lick the ass of whatever Mickey Mouse shits out, and I know it's Amazon, but if you do that, people just basically go, wow, you're a bigot. No, I have taste, you asshole. She like, and I was like, are you gonna fall off your chair? <laughs> <laughs> so please no, no. Oh, um, I would say like expansive, because yeah. we're getting this like whole new look into the second age on screen and it's gonna be so amazing. I also wanna say representative because we're getting like more diversity within this series. Like Like we're seeing our first black elf, we're seeing the first female dwarf, and I'm very looking forward to like looking at that. So in the teaser trailer, and obviously with a lot of stuff that you've probably read about it, we're introduced to the first black elf, mm -hmm. we're introduced to the first uh, female dwarf. Now diversity, especially on screen as an actor, means a lot to me because growing up I hardly had that, you know, watching TV and watching a lot of films and stuff, never saw people of my colour. So it's exciting to see that, you know, diversity is being explored in the rings of power. What are your thoughts on the casting decisions? Um, I'm very excited for it because Tolkien's work was always about being inclusive. I did as well. It's going to be inspiring, right, for the next generation. Definitely. What about you, Shna? In the original film series, which I absolutely adored, but there are not many women in it, and the three women who are in it never speak to one another. Mm -hmm. I don't really. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it will be so cool to be able to see more female representation, to maybe see them actually interact with one another. <laughs> Kill me, please. I want to die. So that's your problem. Your problem with Lord of the Rings, the original movies, was that there were, you saw three women and they didn't talk to each other? What, what do you want? That literally, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you'd know, you'd know that they, they did all they could to put it in three films. <laughs> because it's just so large. For God's sakes. Very excited to see it. How about you, Kels? Uh, it just makes me so excited for the next generation because, like, as you said, like, growing up, like, I was still excited about being um, an elf or a hobbit <laughs> and joining in with it, even though I wasn't represented, like, even, like, my disability mm. or my queerness wasn't represented. It just makes me so happy. It makes my heart warm. Like, going to be seeing younger people. Just, Literally. Like... The Rings of Power is the reason why the four of us are sitting here today. Oh, my God. Her disability and queerness wasn't represented? It's Lord of the Rings. It isn't about you. Jesus Christ. It's a generation of people who can't relate to anything unless it's exactly like them. And that's why everything sucks now. And everyone can't take anything because they don't have any goddamn ability to realize the world doesn't revolve around them. It's like I've always said, bullies are necessary. Getting punched in the face humbles you and wakes you up to the reality that it could all end tomorrow. The world doesn't care about you. Just be the best person you can be and don't force everyone else to suck your ass. Oh, my queerness wasn't represented and my disability. Who doesn't have a disability for God's sakes in this day and age? Everyone's neuro godforsaken divergent. 
I fart crooked and my toes are jammed. God help me, there isn't any Lord of the Ring characters like me. Let it go, Stu, why did you make me watch this? Christ almighty on a pixie stick. This is garbage. It's the most self-serving <laughs> I've seen. And I date attractive women. Okay, Stu, edit all of this out. Do you hear me? I am not playing with you, Stu. I will dock your pay. I can't. I'm not watching a minute more. I swear to Christ I'm not. Oh, we got to edit it. Oh, my God. At the end of the day, the reason why people loved Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings was because they knew not to make the movie about themselves or about their worldviews. And I quote, we made a promise to ourselves at the beginning of the process that we weren't going to put any of our own politics, our own messages, or our own themes into the movies. In a way, we were trying to make these films for him, Tolkien, not ourselves. And that's the way this should have been handled. How are you supposed to know an elf is queer then? You know, if the elf is doing his job and you're fighting orcs, do you take time to go, Legolas, do you like to kiss men or women? <laughs> All right, Fluffy, I get it. I'm sorry, Daddy's rage has reached the pup. The idea of Lord of the Rings for a modern audience is abhorrent to me. Things existed before modern audiences. To dumb down, rewrite, or find classic works problematic is to piss on art itself. You wouldn't paint over the Mona Lisa, would you? Would you turn her into Billie Eilish because that would appeal more with modern audiences? Would you turn Mozart's music into dubstep, you cretin, you uncultured swines? And the answer is probably yes. And then they would go, it's more accessible. It's for everyone. The open phrase of every moronic <laughs> that has bought something that they couldn't create themselves because they're completely and utterly creatively bankrupt. Take something that's loved by the fans and say to you, it's for everyone. I've taken it and I've now made it for everyone and screwed you over specifically because I think you're a bigot. You know what? We do need gatekeeping because some people just don't appreciate fine art. Let it go. I'm done. I can't. I can't do this.